What are you doing? This must be the new guy. Look at that car. Come on, do what you do best. Act like you're working. I'm Larry. Welcome aboard. Hi, I'm Nick. Come on in. You're just in time to see my secret weapon. Oh, well, I'd really like to, but, uh, you know... Okay, what is it? It's word perfect for Windows. Here, pull up this chair. I'll install this disk and show you some basics. You'll have a head start on the rest of the department. I mean, that's why you're here? To install word processors? And then some. You see, it's a matter of style. Word processors are one thing. Word perfect for Windows is more. For your convenience, this video program is divided into chapters. Chapter 1 is an introduction to word processing. Chapter 2 provides a helpful Windows orientation for navigating through the program and menu attributes. Chapter 3 covers the creation of a document and describes formatting techniques to enhance its look and feel. Chapter 4 addresses editing procedures for fast and easy text modification. Chapter 5 introduces WordPerfect's exciting graphic capabilities. Chapter 6 explains printer configuration and options. Chapter 7 divulges tips on the merge process and WordPerfect's tremendous macro potential. And finally, Chapter 8 covers the file manager and some easy ways to find files. The computer is a marvelous tool, Larry. It allows me to electronically manipulate my writing. But that's word processing. Right, but it's bigger than what you're thinking. When I type on a PC word processor, the words wrap from one line to the next without me having to press return. That way, when I make modifications, like deleting a sentence, the other words automatically align themselves accordingly. They wrap around from one line to the next. If I insert words, again, a word processor will automatically accommodate me. When I want to indicate the end of a paragraph, I hit the Enter key, which establishes a hard return. But the real power of a word processor hits home when it's time to rearrange words or sentences or even paragraphs. With Word Perfect for Windows, sections of a document can be rearranged without having to retype the information. A section of text can be copied. It's like taking a picture of the text. 
Then, that electronic copy is pasted to a new location. Sections can also be moved by cutting text from one area in the document and pasting it to a new area. Inserting new text right in the middle of existing text is another advantage I already mentioned. It's easier than retyping the whole document. When modifying in the type over mode, new text actually replaces old text as the letters are typed. That's just the beginning. Word processors are also valuable for formatting documents. By formatting, I mean giving a document that certain visual edge by manipulating characters. Manipulated in what way? Well, letters can be changed to different type styles called fonts. A character's size, width, height, referred to as point size, can also be assigned to a whole section of text. The designated space between each character or between each word can be specified as well. Paragraphs can be formatted, altering their size and width. Even the spaces between lines can be changed. Also, a paragraph can be justified, or the edges can remain ragged. You can line up paragraphs on the left margin, on the right margin, or in the middle, all at the click of an icon. Click of an icon? This sounds like a lot to remember, Nick. I'll explain everything in more detail in a few minutes. Right now, just keep in mind that you can modify the look of a document through formatting. Look at this report. This document has been formatted to include information at the top and bottom of each page. These are called headers and footers. And see how some of the paragraphs have unique attributes? Well, so this is formatting, huh? Right. Well, how will WordPerfect for Windows help me to achieve this look? Well, I'll tell you, better yet, I'll finish the installation and I'll show you. To install WordPerfect for Windows, an IBM PC or compatible with at least a 286 or 386 processor is required. Also, at least two megabytes of random access memory should be available. A graphics adapter and monitor supporting EGA, VGA, or Hercules graphics is needed. Also, a hard disk with six megabytes of free disk space and a floppy disk drive so that the program can be copied. Most importantly, Windows 3.0 or higher should be working on the PC. And I recommend a mouse, since some of the WordPerfect features are not available from the keyboard alone. I'll show you how to install WordPerfect from the very beginning. First, I've got to run the installation program. It's easy. Watch. I'll insert the install program diskette into drive A. At the prompt, I'll type in A colon install and press enter. Then I just respond to the on-screen instructions and follow the prompts to change disks. It's as easy as that. It takes a few minutes to decompress all the files. But listen, to get a document to look as good as possible, WordPerfect is the best program I've found. Well, now that you've got WordPerfect installed, what's next? How well do you know Windows? Well, I'm no expert. <laughs> what does that mean? I've got it on my computer, but I really haven't given it that much attention. OK, this is WordPerfect for Windows. So let me explain a few things you'll want to know about how it works with Windows. First off, the mouse is much more prevalent in any Windows application. See, Windows is an environment filled with graphic icons. Each icon represents an application or task. So anytime you want to initiate a choice, all you have to do is double click on that icon with the left mouse button. Here, let me show you. Windows is already running on my computer. The WordPerfect installation program created this icon here. To start the WordPerfect program, I just double click on that icon, and up comes the WordPerfect program. Here at the top are the main menus. 
These menus provide command options, options that help us accomplish all those word processing functions I described a few minutes ago. Notice how the mouse pointer changes appearance? It can actually take several shapes depending on the task being performed. If I click on the word File, the File menu appears. If I click on Edit, the Edit menu appears. Then I can click on whatever menu item I want. To activate a menu with the keyboard, press Alt. The word File becomes highlighted. With the arrow keys, move to the desired option, then press Enter. The menu appears. Press Escape to leave the menu without making a selection. Another way of selecting a menu option is by pressing Alt and then the underlined letter in the menu name. Like Alt F, see, the file menu appears. Some of the menu choices display shortcut keys to the right. A shortcut key can be a single keystroke or a combination of keys pressed simultaneously. When the shortcut keys are pressed, the corresponding menu choice is activated. Shortcut keys can be used at any time. The menu does not need to be open to initiate the choice. That's why it's called the shortcut. For example, F1 is a shortcut key to invoke help. Anyone getting started will want to remember F1. WordPerfect provides context-sensitive help anywhere in the program. Since I have the file menu open, and the new command highlighted when I press F1, the help screen appears with an explanation of that item. I can click on index to look at a listing of topics I might want to know more about, and then point and click on the topic of my choice. By clicking on this footprint icon here, I can retrace my command steps back. Now I'm back at the index display. If I'm not sure what I want, I can browse forward or backward through more help topics. Finally, Search provides an alphabetical list of every available help topic. To exit help, I'll choose Exit from the Help Window File menu. Boy, that'll be a time saver. But what are the little ellipses and triangles next to some of the choices? Well, many times a command choice will require additional information. Information WordPerfect needs specifically to perform that task. Let me show you. The little ellipses indicate that when choosing this command, you can expect a dialog box to appear. A dialog box accepts the information WordPerfect requires to complete a requested task. I'll explain how to open a file later, but right now I want you to understand that commands with ellipses require more than just pointing and clicking to complete the requested task. A dialog box appears containing various elements, like a text box. This is an area for typing in text. Another typical element of a dialog box is a list box. Here directories are listed, and here files are listed. When a list is too long to display all the names, a scroll bar appears so I can look through the undisplayed names. By clicking on the arrows, I move the list one name at a time in the direction of that arrow. This button here in the scroll bar orients me to my location in relation to the entire list. By clicking and dragging the button, I can view another section of this list. Check boxes are also found in many dialog boxes. I can click on the box to mark the option on or off. When an X appears, the option is on or engaged. When the box is empty, that option is off or disengaged. Command buttons initiate the listed command. If a command button has ellipses after the name, that means there are more choices to look at. There are some other dialog box elements that you'll see as I get into other areas of the program. Let's not get bogged down in all the details right up front. There are more great things to learn, and besides, if you need help when you get back to your computer, you can use a logic note booklet for more specifics on commands and choices. Logic notes? It's a handy reference booklet that complements what I'm explaining now. I don't expect you to remember everything we're covering, but this booklet will answer some basic concerns when you actually start working on your own computer. Now, you ask about this triangle here. 
If I click on any command displaying a triangle at the right side, another cascading menu appears with more choices. Notice that all the menu items are followed by ellipses, which means more menus. Nick, uh, Nick, I get the idea, but listen. Can you show me how to really use this program? I mean, I can experiment with getting around on my own later. Well, sure, Larry. I know what you mean. Seeing how to get results is much more useful than just learning how to operate it. So we'll create a document in just a second. But before that, I'll quickly remind you that an advantage to using Windows is using Windows. The Word Perfect for Windows program allows us to work in or open many different windows at once. By clicking on File, then New, I open another blank document. The title bar displays Document 2. Until I name a document, WordPerfect just calls it document, followed by a number. I'll do it once more. File, then New. Now several documents are open at once, even though you can only see the active window. This is great when I need to reference one document while I'm working in another. I'll go ahead and open an existing document file by choosing Open from the File menu. Here's the dialog box. I'll double click on the file name I want. The title bar displays the name of the document. The cursor flashes in this active window waiting for my input. To arrange the window so they can all be seen at once, I can go to the window menu and select cascade or tile. This is cascade and this is tile. I can switch between the different windows by clicking the mouse on the window I want or by choosing the document name from the window menu. I can resize a document window by clicking on the edge and dragging the mouse to the appropriate location. I can also use the minimize and restore buttons to size a window. A lot of times there's more text than can be displayed in a window. So scroll bars on the side and bottom allow easy movement through the sections of a document with the mouse. I can also use the page up or page down keys to scroll up or down a page at a time. And if I'm in a really long document, I can press the control key and the home key simultaneously to return to the beginning of the document. The status bar down here at the bottom of the screen will give me information about my current cursor position page number, line number, and so on. Okay, I want to close all these extra windows before I begin working on my document. So I'll go to the file menu and choose close, right? Well, yeah, I guess. I'll click on the file menu since WordPerfect considers each document a file, and then I'll select close. The active window closes, and a different window becomes active. It's the opposite of when I opened them. Right. So? Well, there's even a faster way to perform a common task like this one, from the button bar. The button bar? It's a bar that appears on the screen. It provides icons which you choose to accomplish tasks quickly. It's a great tool. But I don't see what you're talking about. Well, that's because I have to tell WordPerfect to display the button bar. It's out of view right now. Look at this view menu. It contains the names of different tools I can display or view while I'm working. When I click on button bar, the button bar appears across the top of the screen. Now I can just click on the close icon and the command is performed. The button bar can be customized to include any command or macro that I want. It's a real time saver. I know, I know. You're ready to see the program move into high gear. Just remember to turn on the button bar when you start using WordPerfect. I will. Now, if I exit the program with the button bar in view, it will also be displayed the next time I start the program. Let's create a document. I've shown you a few tips for getting around WordPerfect for Windows. Now I'll show you some creation and formatting basics. I'll start with a new blank document, like a blank sheet of paper. I'm ready to start typing. I know I'm in a document, 
because the title bar at the top contains the word document, followed by the window number. Okay, I'll type first quarter special report. I can correct any mistakes by moving back, deleting errors, and inserting the correction. The power of word processing. I can correct errors without killing trees. You're not one of those green consciousness guys, are you? No, Larry, just intelligent. Now, what about centering this line of text and making the letters bold? Well, don't we need a desktop publisher to do that? Larry, this is the 90s. We're talking about word perfect here. Look, I want to modify this title line, so I'll click and drag the mouse over the words. That highlights those words. Now I'll go to the layout menu. Here, there are many formatting options available. I can manipulate a line, a paragraph, a whole page, just a column, but since I only want to affect one line of text, I'll select line. A cascading menu pops up. WordPerfect wants to know what I want to do to this line. Here's center. I'll click on it. The line is now centered. I'll highlight it again and go to the font menu and click on bold. It's bold. From this font menu, I can make the text italicized, underlined, or a combination of these great alternatives. And look at this. I'll click on fonts. And look at the vast list of available type styles I have for use with a laser printer. This is the fonts dialog box. Here I can choose the style, point size, and I can see exactly what it's going to look like in the preview area. On the right of the dialog box, I can modify the appearance and again see exactly how it will look. I'll escape back to the document and highlight the line again, dragging the mouse across while I hold down the left button. Instead of pulling down the font menu, I'll just click on the font icon on the button bar. The font dialog box appears. I'll modify the point size. And there's the change. Well, this feature alone will improve the look of my documents immensely. It's more than just a word processor, that's for sure. Before I enter type in the body of the text, I'll turn on the ruler, which gives me immediate access to formatting tools I use frequently. From the View menu, I'll click on Ruler. The ruler appears across the top. The ruler is another shortcut offered by WordPerfect to access commands normally found in the layout and font menus. Let me get this straight. You can modify fonts and the layout using three different procedures? That's right. Through the font menu, the font icon on the button bar, or through this ruler. WordPerfect is really flexible. I keep the ruler turned on because it's so convenient. I can set up margins and tabs just by clicking on the appropriate arrows with my mouse. Here are the margin markers on the very top of the ruler. It's easy to increase or decrease the margin by clicking on the appropriate triangle and dragging it to the new spot. These little triangles are the tab markers. The buttons are the tab sets for left, center, right, and decimal tabs. Remember, the type size and style can be modified from the ruler as well. This button with the grid allows me to quickly create a table to display financial data or just to organize items into columns and rows. This columns button is a powerful formatting tool. Let me take a minute to enter my information to demonstrate the power of this feature. All right, this looks okay, but I want it to look great, and WordPerfect gives me that power. I'll click on the columns icon. Here I can select the number of columns I want to appear. Modifying the column numbers is a breeze. And watch how easy it is to modify the width of a column. Just click and drag on the triangles. Or to move the column, just click in the gray area and drag to the new location. I love this feature. If I want to return a column to its original position, I just grab it and drag it to the top of the document window with the mouse. The next button is for justification. I can dictate whether text will appear left justified, right justified, centered, or full. 
That is justified on both sides. Finally, the line spacing button can be used to choose one, one and a half, or two from the list. One is good for me. Can you see how flexible this is? Well, this will definitely help me. Formatting can make or break a document. On every report I submit, I like to include page numbers, an identifying name next to that page number, also a reference at the top of the page for identification, which is a header. WordPerfect provides easy ways to integrate headers, footers, and numbered pages. I'll show you. Here in the layout menu, the page command is available. I'll click on it, and a cascading menu appears offering formatting options which will affect every page of a document. Headers, footers, and page numbering are the most common features that I use. I'll select numbering and, from this dialog box, indicate where I want the page number to appear. Lower right. As you can see, the numbers are displayed on the preview sheets. Over here on the right, I'll fill in the accompanying text that I want. I'll press Enter, and that information will print on every page. Now from the Layout menu, I'll choose Page again, only this time I'll select Header. A dialog box appears, giving me a choice. I can create two separate headers on each page, but I only want one, so I'll select Header A and tell it to print on every page. I'll click on Create, and then type in my header at the blinking cursor. Now if I want to see these actually displayed in the document, I can go to the View menu and click on Reveal Codes. Reveal Codes displays all the electronic codes normally hidden from view in the document. Here are the codes for the header and the page numbers. I can even edit a header or footer when Reveal Codes is selected from the View menu. I prefer not to reveal codes most of the time. Still with me? You bet. But you mentioned earlier that I could cut or copy or paste sections of a document? Right. Okay, our next step then is to edit a document. Editing is really easy, but it's best to understand that to alter a section of a document, I first have to select or designate the specific section I want to manipulate. You follow? Well, that seems logical. Before you can paint, you have to choose a canvas, right? <laughs> well, it's more like before I can sculpt clay, I need to have some in my hands. Watch. Let's say I want to make this sentence bold. I'll select or highlight it by clicking and dragging the mouse over it. When I release the mouse button, the text is highlighted. Now it's like clay in my hands. I can modify this section any way I want. I'll click on bold. It's taken its shape. Now watch the cut and copy icons in the button bar carefully as I highlight some text. They turn darker, indicating they are now available choices. If I click somewhere on the document, the highlight disappears and the cut and copy icons go dim. The cursor flashes, indicating I can type in text, but without anything selected, WordPerfect doesn't know what to cut or copy. So cut and copy are dim because they can't be used until something is highlighted or selected. I'll select a paragraph by clicking and dragging across it with the mouse. Now that it's selected, I can press cut. The paragraph disappears. Now get a load of this. I can move my cursor over here and click on paste. The section I cut out is pasted in that new area. When I cut it out, the section was temporarily stored in an area called the clipboard. When I pasted, I transferred it from the clipboard to the new location. I'll select another section of text. I'll press copy, and the area highlighted remains. A copy of that highlighted area is now residing in the clipboard. When I position my cursor and press paste, the duplicated section is pasted in the new location. There are several methods of selecting sections of text. As I've already demonstrated, click and drag the mouse, or click twice on a word. The whole word is highlighted. Click three times on a word, and the entire sentence containing that word is selected. The whole sentence. 
Click four times on a word with a mouse and an entire paragraph is selected. Once selected, I can do anything to it. I can make the text bold, alter the justification, or just press delete and it's gone for good. Of course, I could select undo from the edit menu to restore my document to its appearance before performing the previous command. Undo is a very comforting feature if you're trigger happy like me. Now the F8 function key is used to select a section with only the keyboard. I'll position my cursor and press F8. Now I can press the arrow keys to highlight an area I want. To select the remainder of a line, I can press end. With the area selected, I can again delete or copy. I'll select italics. Word perfect is great. So before I can modify a section, I have to select it. I'll remember that. Right, and I can cut, copy, or paste using the button bar. Otherwise, I'd have to pull down the edit menu, then select cut, copy, or paste from there. Speaking of the edit menu, there's another command I'd like to tell you about. I'll click on edit, and here's cut, copy, and paste, among other commands. And here's a search command. When I need to find a certain word or phrase in a document, I can click on search or press F2, and the search dialog box appears. WordPerfect is wondering what I want to search for. I'll type in the word I want to find, specify the direction in which to search in the document, and click on the search button. The cursor moves to the first occurrence of that word. It's that fast. Now to look at the next occurrence of the same word, I can click on next in the edit menu or press shift plus F2. The cursor moves to the next occurrence of the word in this document. To search for a word and then replace it with a different word automatically, I'll move my cursor back up to the beginning of the document by pressing the control key and the home key simultaneously. I want to return to the top of the document so that I can make sure the entire document gets searched. Okay, now I'll choose replace from the edit menu. The search and replace dialog box appears. I'll fill in the word to search for and then the word to replace with. Now I can either tell WordPerfect to replace all the occurrences of the word or to allow me to confirm each replacement. I'll hit replace all and the program searches for the word and replaces it with a new word. This has come in handy on a lot of occasions. Like once I misspelled the client's name through an entire proposal. What did you do? Well, I just had the program search for the name I'd mistakenly used and replace it with the correct name. What used to take hours to fix now takes seconds. Misspellings have been my downfall on many occasions. Well, no more, my friend. WordPerfect has a spell check feature. Look, the Tools menu has lots of helpful commands. Here's a speller. I'll just click on it. The Speller dialog box appears. Here in the lower right corner, I can select whether I want the speller to check the whole document or just a section of it. I'll choose Start, and the speller compares each word in the document with WordPerfect's dictionary. When the speller finds a word it doesn't recognize, like this word which is a proper name, WordPerfect stops and displays alternative suggestions. Since it's a proper name and it appears several times in this document, I'll add it to the supplemental dictionary. I can add any word to the dictionary list. The speller continues its search and the next word in question appears. I can replace the word with any suggested word I highlight or skip it. I'll replace it with this highlighted word. When the speller has completed the check, a spell check completed message appears. I'll choose close and return to the document. This speller is great because it will catch irregular capitalization. Like if I mistakenly capitalize the second letter of a word. The speller also recognizes when I duplicate a word. You know, use the word twice in a row like the, the. These features really keep me looking smart. I sent out a memo last week and a reader reported an error just like that. When can I load this program on my computer? In a little bit. First let me show you another great feature in the tools menu. A thesaurus is also available. I'll escape and select a word. Next I'll choose thesaurus from the tools menu. The thesaurus dialog box appears. 
A word list box displays all the alternatives to this word. I'll click on a suggested word and then choose Replace. The new word now appears in the document. I'll highlight another word and press Alt plus F1. That's another way of invoking the thesaurus. Again, the first list box displays alternatives. I can double click on a word here and a second word list appears containing synonyms for that word. Now I can scroll to this list and double click on a word. A third word list appears containing synonyms and antonyms for the specified word. I can peruse all these words, highlight the one I want, and choose replace. The new word appears in the document. You can really produce powerful documents with this feature. Well, I won't have an excuse for poor word choice again. Well, Word Perfect is more than just words. It's graphics, too. <music> graphics really set apart a document. Well, they are worth a thousand words, right? <laughs> You're thinking of pictures, Larry. Graphics are worth quite a bit if integrated correctly in a document to add interest or professionalism. In a sense, they're better than a thousand words because, well, who wants to read a thousand words? Look here. Let's say I want to place a graphic at the top of my document. I'll click up here and the insertion point appears. I'll click on the graphics menu and choose Figure. Retrieve. Actually, the F11 function key accomplishes the same thing. A dialog box appears where I can choose from a list of files. I'll make sure I'm in the graphics subdirectory and choose a graphic file by highlighting it and pressing retrieve or double clicking on the file name. Either way, the graphic appears with the text reformatted around it. Now watch this. I can modify the size of this graphic by clicking on and dragging the handles, which are the little dots situated around the graphic. The graphic inside will maintain the same proportions. You'll want to experiment with this later. If I move the mouse over the graphic, click and drag, I move the entire image wherever I want without altering its size. Whenever I load a graphic, it's surrounded by a border. I can modify the border or remove it completely. I can also manipulate the graphic, rotate it, reposition it, or resize it within the border. Watch. I'll go to the graphics menu, figure, and then edit because I'm editing the position of the graphic figure. Now the figure editor appears. The figure editor is actually a new window with all the tools to edit a graphic. See the title bar? It affirms my location. Here in the upper left is a menu bar. These menus contain commands that affect this graphic. I'll click on edit. These are the editing options I have. They all affect the graphic within the frame. I want to rotate it, so I'll click on that. An axis indicator appears over the graphic. By simply clicking on the vertical axis, the graphic is rotated 90 degrees. Clicking on the left axis rotates the graphic 180 degrees. Dragging the right axis lets me position the graphic at any angle I want. Isn't this great? I can mirror the image move it, reduce it, WordPerfect is terrific. I'll choose close from the figure editor file menu and the graphic is displayed just the way I wanted it. I strongly recommend that you experiment with these graphics capabilities. Just have fun with them and eventually it'll become second nature to you. I'll do it. Before I show you how to print this document, let me save my work. Anytime you're working on a document, it's a good idea to save it periodically. It's easy. I'll choose Save from the File menu or press the Shift F3 key combination. If the document hasn't been saved yet, the Save As dialog box appears. I'll specify the drive and directory where I want this document saved. I'll type the file name in the Save As text box and verify the format here. If I wanted to save this document in the ASCII format for use with other software programs, I could assign that here. I'll accept the default and click on Save. All my hard work is now stored for easy retrieval later. A 
Our next task is to print this document on paper. During installation of WordPerfect, we normally install several printer drivers to support the printers we might use. Okay. These printer drivers basically communicate between the software and the printer. So I need to select the correct printer information in WordPerfect so I can communicate with my brand of printer. From the File menu, I can choose Select Printer. The Select Printer dialog box displays the printers I initially set up. I'm actually utilizing drivers which originate in the Windows program. I can set up the specific requirements for a print job by clicking on Setup and assigning my printer, my paper source, and my paper size. Next, I can choose the paper orientation and the number of copies. When everything is the way I want, I'll click OK. I'll click on Select to initiate my choices. Now that the printer is set up, I always like to take a quick peek at how the document is going to look before I print it out. This displays a document with headers and footers and page numbering so that I don't have to guess. To do this, I'll choose File, Print Preview, or Shift plus F5. The Print Preview menu appears on the screen. I can choose to view my document in several different ways. I can also preview pages based on my choices in the Pages menu. Facing Pages lets me look at two consecutive pages from the document. I can go to a specific page and preview it. I can preview the next page or the previous page if that applies. And of course, WordPerfect always provides help if I need it. OK, this looks pretty good, so I'll return to my document by selecting Close. Now I'll select Print from the File menu, or just press F5. The Print dialog box appears on screen. Here, the current printer is confirmed, or I can select a different one if I want. I have the option to print the full document, only the current page, or selected multiple pages. I can print a document to disk, or if I've selected a certain portion of a document to print, that selected text would be available. Again, the number of copies and any document settings I might need to specify. I'll choose Print. The results of all my labor are tangible. All this power is only good if you can get it on paper. I'm impressed. There are just a few more things you need to know about this program. I've mentioned the power to improve the style. Well, WordPerfect's macro capabilities are high caliber weapons that increase productivity. A macro is really just a series of commands that you design. Larry, is there a task that you have to do consistently when you write letters or memos? Well, what do you mean? Well, do you include your name and department or the company addresses on each piece of correspondence? Well, as a matter of fact, I do include my name, title, address, phone number, and extension. What if from now on you could produce that information by simply pressing two keys simultaneously? Well, that'd save a lot of time. All you have to do is record the actions you go through when you enter the information. That recorded sequence is the macro. Then, when you want to play that macro, the recorded sequence of commands is automatically performed. I'll make a macro for myself. Watch. I'll click on the macro menu and select Record, or I could just press Control and F10 simultaneously. Either way, the Record Macro dialog box appears. I need to name my macro so that I can identify it later. I'll call it Open Memo. WordPerfect will automatically add the appropriate file extension .wcm and save the file name in the macro subdirectory. I can add a little description here if I want. Here in the abstract box, I could add a more detailed description. I'll choose Record Now and perform the steps to accomplish my desired goal. I'll enter the word Memorandum across the top of the page and I'll center it. Now the word to colon. I'll hit enter to go to the next line and type from colon. My name and title. The address of this office.
my phone number and extension. Now I'll arrow back up so that the cursor is flashing next to the word to, ready for the name when I'm creating a real memo. I'll click on the macro menu and choose stop to stop the recording process. Now let me open a new document to demonstrate this effectively. Here's a blank document. I'll select play from the macro menu and the play macro dialog box appears. I can select the macro I want to play or type in its name and select play. And there it is. There's more. If I want to modify the macro, I can select edit macro. Also a really exciting feature is being able to assign a macro to the menu. Well, what do you mean? If I'm going to be using this macro a lot, I can assign it to the macro menu as an actual menu choice. I can assign up to nine macros to the macro menu. Oh, now this I've got to see. I'll pull down the macro menu and choose Assign. The Assign Macros to Menu dialog box appears. This is a list of assigned macros. I want to insert my macro as a menu item, so I'll choose Insert. The Insert Macro Menu Item dialog box appears. I'll type in the macro name or press this little list button to choose my macro from the Select File dialog box. Menu text is the word or words that appear in the menu. I can leave it blank and the menu will display the macro name. I'll type in Begin Memo and press OK. I'll choose OK again to return to my document. Now check out the macro menu. If I click on my macro, it performs automatically. I am just amazed. Larry, that's not all. Let me show you a powerful feature you'll really love. Mail merge. Mail merge? Have you ever written a letter with the express purpose of sending it to a lot of different people? Well, sure. Why? Now you don't have to type each letter separately. Picture this. Take a form letter. That is a letter with blanks where the names and addresses of the recipients belong. We'll call the form letter the primary document. Then take a huge list containing the names and addresses of all the people you want to send that letter to. We'll call the list the secondary file. Then let WordPerfect combine the two documents so that personalized letters are printed automatically, each containing a different name and address supplied by the list. Wouldn't that be handy? Well, watch. The list file contains names and addresses. Each name and address in the list is called a record. Each record can be further divided into fields. That is, the person's name is one field, the address is another field, and so on. I'll create several records, each containing three fields, the name, the address, and the person's first name. I'll then merge the records into the form letter. The form letter will contain blanks for the fields to appear in, so each record must have the same number of fields. I'll create some records. I'll start the first record by typing a full name. I want this name to be the first field in the record, so I'll go to the Tools menu and choose Merge. Then End Field from the Merge menu. An End Field code appears, and the cursor moves to the next line. I don't want to press enter or there will be a blank line after the name when the record is merged. Now I'll type the contents of the second field of this record. When I'm done with the second field, I'll select the end field from the merge menu again. Again, the end field code appears and the insertion point moves to the next line. Now I'll enter the third field of this record. All I want is the person's first name, so I'll select End Field by pressing the Alt key and Enter at the same time. It's the same as choosing it from the menu. The End Field code appears. This is the end of my first record, so I'll select Tools, Merge, and End Record. A hard page break line is inserted to signify the end of the record. I'll repeat that process for each new record I create. I don't need this last hard page break for the final record, so I'll press backspace to delete it. 
Now I'll save this file by choosing Save from the File menu and entering the name I want to call this secondary file. WordPerfect adds the file extension .sf to identify it as a secondary file. Finally, I'll close the file so that I can create my primary file. The primary file also contains merge codes. I'll create the form letter. First, I'll center the page by choosing Page from the Layout menu and then selecting Center Page. Now when the letter is printed, it will be centered from the top to the bottom of the page. I want to begin the letter with a code that inserts the current date in the merge document. I'll choose Merge from the Tools menu and then choose Merge Codes. The Insert Merge Codes dialog box appears. I'll scroll down to the date code, select it, and press Insert. I'll return to the letter. A date code now appears at the top of the letter. Now I'll press Enter twice to go to the spot I want to place my fields from the secondary list file. From the Tools menu, Merge, then I'll choose Field. Since I want to insert my first field, I'll type 1 in the Insert Merge Code dialog box. A Field 1 code appears in the letter. This is where the contents of Field 1 will be printed. I'll press Enter to move to the next line. This is where I want the second field to appear, so I'll click on Tools, Merge, and choose Field. I'll type in 2 and OK. The Field 2 code appears. This is where Field 2 contents will appear. Next I'll press Enter twice, type the word Dear, space. This is the spot I want Field number 3. So I'll choose Field from the Merge menu, type 3, in the Insert Merge Code dialog box and choose OK. A Field 3 code appears. I'll put a comma after that code and finish typing the letter. OK, I've completed the letter. Now I'll save it. File, Save, and I'll call it Letter 1. WordPerfect adds the .pf file extension, identifying it as a primary file. Now I'll close the document from the File menu. Are you following this? Well, sure. You've created a primary document and inserted field codes that correlate to the secondary document's fields. So now what? You have been following. Now I can merge the two documents to create a third document. I'll choose Merge from the Tools menu and then choose Merge. The Merge dialog box appears. I'll click on the List button to display a list of possible primary files. I'll double-click on my choice. I'll locate my secondary file in the same way. I'll choose OK to begin the merge. When the merge is complete, the file contains four separate letters, each divided by a page break. A merge file contains as many letters as there are records in the list I use. Now I'll save the file, I'll name it Announce, and press OK. I can print the file just like I print any other file by choosing Print from the File menu. I'll choose Print to print the letters. I printed four personalized letters and only had to type it once. That's WordPerfect for Windows. OK, one final bit of information and I'll let you get going with this yourself. You might not have problems keeping track of files, but that used to be a weak spot for me. It used to be? WordPerfect for Windows' incredible file management capabilities really made my life a lot easier. Here in the File menu, I'll click on the File Manager. The File Manager appears. It's like a whole separate program. I'll maximize it by clicking on the Maximize button, and it covers the entire screen. The action happens in the Navigator, and in the viewer. I'll show you. Say I want to find a specific graphic in WordPerfect for Windows. I can move down the path to the file by starting in the drive box. Here I can choose the drive to search through. I know it's on the C drive, so I'll proceed to the next window, which displays a directory listing of my C drive. 
I can scroll to find the Word Perfect for Windows subdirectory. I'll click on it here, WPWIN. The result is another listing in the next box. Here the navigator displays a directory listing at the WPWIN directory. Here's a subdirectory called Graphics. I'll double click on it. A list of the graphics files appears in the next box in the navigator. Since these are files, I can click once on any of them and the viewer will display the contents of the file. Notice the name of the file preceded by its path displayed next to the viewer title. I'll click on another and another. If I were to double click on a file, the manager would return me to WordPerfect and open the file in a document window. I can look at this list from a different view as well. I'll choose File List from the View menu. The files in the Graphics subdirectory are listed with size and the date and time last saved. This is detailed information that is good to know. I'll go back to the Wide Navigator view by choosing View from the layouts and then Wide Navigator. This button bar here under the menus has some great features. For example, I can use it to open, copy, move, or delete selected files. I'll copy several of these graphics to a disk in the A drive. I'll just drag across the files I want to copy and click on Copy. The Copy Files dialog box appears. I'll type in A colon at the To Directory box. Then I can choose to copy the highlighted file, skip the file, copy all the files displayed in the box, or cancel the copy command. I'll copy all. The percent bar here keeps me posted as to my progress. You know, this is pretty amazing for a word processor. Can you see why I'm so excited about the program? And look, here's another amazing feature. Let's say I can't remember the name of the file, but I do know it contained a certain word. WordPerfect can identify files by words in the body of the document. So if I wrote a letter with the word insurance in it, I can find that file by simply clicking on the Find Word button. The Find Words dialog box appears. In the text box, I'll type in insurance and click on the search button. WordPerfect searches through the files and displays the name or names of the files containing the word insurance in a search results window. I'll double click on the file name to open it. You know, this is a pretty amazing program, Nick. I mean, I can see why you want to get the entire company online with it. It really is marvelous. And for those on staff that already use WordPerfect 5.1, there's an optional 5.1 keyboard driver they can switch to. This will allow them to use most of the familiar 5.1 keystroke commands from within the Windows interface. There's no problem retrieving 5.1 documents into WordPerfect for Windows either. Boy, they thought of everything. They give us plenty of online help, a great manual, and with a Logic Notes booklet, you should be producing great documents in no time. So get going.